And tonight on the Sports Authority, we have Bengals royalty. I'm not talking about Richard Skinner. He's here all the time. We'll talk about Bengal Jim here, talking about some really big things you guys got going on to try and get more stripes in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, just recognizing our Bengal legends. Uh, you know, we've been 50-plus years as, a, as an organization, right? Our Cincinnati Bengals, we have one Bengal in the Hall of Fame. So if we're bringing, uh, we're shedding more light on, you know, the, the players that we think should be in the Hall of Fame. We know the senior voters will be voting here sometime in July. So uh, we just want to get some, some, some publicity and get up to the Hall of Fame and, and celebrate our greats and, and have some fun with it. Now, you two have been around Bengals football a lot longer than I have. Uh, why is there only one guy in the Hall of Fame? I'll let you go first, Jim. It's a great question. And that's, yeah. that, that kind of leads to what you're doing this week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To your point. So it's interesting. You know, uh, we've, we, we know all nine of the senior voters uh, that, are, that are going through this process. And there's really not a whole lot of transparency. And they're all, they're all nine guys trying to do the right thing. But I think what we found here is that uh, I think Cincinnati being a small market is a really big piece of this. I know we had a bad stretch there in the 90s, which I think didn't help us at all. But at the end of the day, I think the biggest cause uh, for this, just Anthony being, is, is, is the small market. Yeah, and, and I do wonder, and it, they, they're kind of rectifying that with the Ring of Honor, the whole, if you're not going to recognize yours, why should we recognize yours too? Now, that's a small-minded way of thinking about this process um, because not every team has had a Ring of Honor for all these years. Ken Anderson, when teams started doing Ring of Honors, I think Denver had one at that point, Dallas. I'm not sure anybody else had one but those two teams when Kenny played in his career. So I do think that that comes into play a little bit, that if you're not going to recognize your own, why should we recognize yours too? How important do you think the Ring of Honor is, at least moving forward, Jim? Yeah, I think I think there might be some truth to that, uh, Skinny. We we hear that across the country when we start talking to to national media folks. If you're not going to recognize your own, why should the National right. Football League recognize yours? But uh, the Ring of Ring of Honor, I know the Bengals have been working on that for probably three or four years now. Finally, kicking that off this year, and I think it's important. I love what the organization is doing. You know, tying the history of this organization, the unbelievable history of this organization, how Paul Brown got this team here, all the great teams of the '70s and the '80s great history here and they're finally tying it in pretty consistently to every aspect of, of what they're doing here and I love it. I know the big cry has always been from Bengals fans like you said we need more guys there are guys who are statistically on the field whatever that they're deserving of going to Canton it seems like the last few years you've kind of spearheaded this raising more awareness of hey we got these guys here what what started your I guess being the outcry and then the voice of the Bengals fans to get guys. Yeah, in the yeah game. I think again, obviously it's not just me. We have you know thousands of fans out here screaming the same thing. We just kind of are facilitating this event up in Canton. Um, but but at the end of the day, um, it, it's you know this started years ago, uh, and then earlier this year we said, what else can we do as a fan base to get uh, to rally behind our guys? At the end of the day, if you go in the 1970s, though, I do think those great Bengals teams of the 70s were certainly overshadowed by the Steelers teams. And so you lose the fact of how great Ken Anderson was because they went to the playoffs but didn't go to the Super Bowl until 81. Um, you lose sight of the fact of how great Ken Riley was. You lose sight of the fact of how great Lamar Parrish was. And the funny part is, and you've actually got some sound bites from a guy, Mel Blunt, who played against these guys, Ken Anderson as a cornerback and as a peer to Lamar Parrish and, 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 and Ken Riley, he's trying to help you out a little bit with this stuff too. Yeah. But it's just it, it's so <laughs> hard because all you think about are the teams of the 70s in the AFC is Pittsburgh and a little bit of the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, James Lofton also did a video for right. us, uh, you know, pounding a table. We've got Michael Strahan getting ready for, to give for us a big, later player, for, for Willie Anderson, for Willie right, Anderson, right. these other guys. But I mean, just look at Ken Riley and Ken Anderson. That's going to be our main focus up in Canton. Are those two individuals? All eight players we're going to be talking about, but the main two we got Willie. We're going to talk about for sure. But you know, Ken Riley. Uh, you know, when out yeah, of the top eight interception leaders in NFL history, he's number five. He was four when he retired. Um, he's the only one out of those top eight not in the Hall of Fame. He has more interceptions than 29 DBs in, in the NFL Hall of Fame. Um, it, that The outcry there is more for, for Kenny, and unfortunately his passing last year. I think there's more uh, outcry for that uh, even because of that. And then Ken Anderson, you've got to be kidding me, right? Uh, <laughs> a four-time passing leader, back-to-back -back years uh, in two different decades. Uh, MVP, should have probably been an MVP in another year. Uh, all the passing records that he broke, the, uh, you know, the, the completion percentage records and the single game completion, both these guys are overdue. Kenny Anderson is the oldest living player uh, from that Super Bowl 16 team. So that's why our cry for those two is, is greater than others. And when people point to Ken Anderson and say, well, he, did, he didn't win a Super Bowl. How many Super Bowls did Dan Fouts play yeah. in? <laughs> And I love Dan Fouts. Don't get me wrong. Dan Fouts was great. I love watching Dan Fouts. How many Super Bowls did he play in? Yeah, yeah. And how, how many, Zero. How many, uh, how many times did Ken Anderson outplay him? Yeah, correct. Correct. <laughs> Once here in the freezer bowl, yes. right? So, he admitted it. Dan yeah, admitted it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's again, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's a travesty yeah. at the end of the day. I want to talk about Ken Riley for a second because I think he is – 
kind of the worst case scenario with this because you'd love to have him there to see his accomplishments with his passing over the last year. How much does that kind of give you the reality of we're, we're kind of working against the clock for some of these guys that you want them recognized while they can still go there and get the gold jacket themselves. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's several on this list of eight, right? But Ken Anderson being uh, the next one. But what's even, you know, what's even more heartbreaking is, you know, we're, we've are we built a relationship with Ken Riley's family through this process. Uh, I was down with them at a golf outing down in, outside of Tampa about a month and a half ago. You know, I'm talking to Ken Riley II, and the big thing there, he, he wants this to ha happen more now than ever because he wants his mom to see this, right? So, um, you know, you start hearing those stories about it affects the families, man, and it just brings a tear to your eyes. And that's why uh, this, is a, this, this is our time as Bengal fans. Our voices are absolutely being heard about this. We had Ira Kaufman, who is one of the nine senior voters from Tampa Bay on our, we have a podcast that we do. Uh, and he literally started a show off and just said, hey guys, I just got to give a shout out to Bengal Nation. He said, the last six months to a year, the outcry on social media has been amazing. We see it, we hear it. So if anybody thinks what we're doing and what the fans are doing now in Cincinnati isn't helping, this is, that's our goal, to shed more light on this, get more people talking about this, not just locally, but nationally. I'm gonna give you a quick stat. Ken Riley, and I would make a case for Lamar Parrish ahead of Ken Riley, but yes, I know where you're going with this, and I'm good with that. They played in the secondary. A good pass rating today is in the high 80s, low 90s, really good's in the hundreds, right? Their secondary, which had Lamar Parrish, Ken Riley, Tommy Casanova, who ended up quitting after a few years to become a doctor, they held teams in 1976 to a passer rating of 47.4. Not not pa completion percentage, passer rating. How good was that secondary? And two of those guys should be in the Hall of Fame. Amazing. I think, you know, Kenny and Lam uh, Lamar played for seven or eight years together. Yeah, right, correct. And, and what's even a crazier, crazier statistic, the, you know, Ken Riley's interceptions, most of his career, uh, they only threw about 15 to 18 times a game. Right. Uh, so, which... Which again, when, when they look at it for players in that era, uh, Ken Anderson, Ken Riley passed, passed this with flying colors. By far. By far. By far. Uh, obviously, the players are not going to pound their chest and be like, put me in the Hall of Fame, because then they're definitely not getting in the Hall of Fame. What are the players that you've worked with and that you've built the relationships with through this? What do they think about the, the whole process and, and what you guys are doing to try and help them get recognized? And again, we haven't talked to all the players, but there are definitely a handful of them that we've been talking through this process. And what I've come to learn is that these guys are no different than, than you and me. Uh, and they are, and, and you know, guys like Ken Riley and, and Ken Anderson and Willie Anderson and all these guys, these guys are the most humble people. They don't want to go out here and pound the table for themselves. If it happens, it happens. They want to get in. Uh, but they're not out there pounding their chest, and that's not who they are. Um, and it's um, definitely Ken Anderson, Ken Riley that, that fit that mold. I know what you talked about, your focus for Ken Anderson, Ken Riley for this. Uh, who are some other guys you've focused on? I know we've talked about Willie Anderson, Corey Dillon has to be in that mix. Yes. Some other guys that you've, you maybe down the road will eventually stump for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's hard, man, because when you when you look at, um, you, if, if you're trying to make an impact, you have to use a smaller number. Sure. You can't, let's get all eight right. of these guys in, right? right? Uh, but Corey Dillon, obviously Chad Johnson, I think, is Eventually, borderline, yes, borderline sure. there as well. But some of the other players we talked about, Lamar Parrish, uh, man, you look at his numbers, one of the most underrated players in no NFL question. history. Uh, but then beyond that, yeah, you have uh, maybe the best guard ever played NFL, uh, definitely the best guard the Bengals ever had, Max Montoya, mm -hmm. uh, should be on, in, that, in that Hall of Fame up there. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, Max is a great guy, and, and he's doing some stuff for us virtually uh, for that up there as well. Um, trying to miss him, missing somebody there. Um, Max. Uh, Lamar, Kenny, Isaac, Isaac Curtis would be. Oh, more Isaac, like, yeah, Isaac Curtis. Yeah. Isaac Curtis. Is on and and unfortunately, sorry. if you look at his numbers, they're not overwhelming, but, but different era, different time. But, and I will tell you, the NFL put in a rule that was called at the time the Isaac Curtis rule yeah. to stop <laughs> chucking wide receivers and cutting them at the line of scrimmage. Pretty good when a name's a rule's named after you, correct? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and he was a game changer correct. in the NFL. The other thing you know about Isaac that's interesting, um, you know. <laughs> It, it, Drew Pearson just made it into the Hall of Fame this past year. Great player. Not you know we're not bad mouthing anybody. Drew deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. But he stumped for himself hard. Yes, he did. And, and literally, if you take if you take their statistics and take the names off the top, it, they're identical. Right. They're absolutely identical. And, and uh, if and that's where I think the NFL made a little bit of a mistake, which is good for us because I truly think uh, Drew getting in last year, all of a sudden Isaac, you got to be kidding. Sure. Me. Uh, which you know I think was even more of a game changer especially during the 70s and no the rule, question. Cha rule changes that he had. No so. question. So take me through the event that you're having next week up in Canton at the Hall of Fame. Yeah, exciting. So we, this is our chance, uh, Bengal fans, to, for our voices to be heard. This is going to be a fun, respectful time. We're going to be on the grounds of the Hall of Fame. We, we're renting this, this uh, event tent from the Hall of Fame, and they have been outstanding to work with. So there's a lot of things going on that day, but specifically the rally. Uh, what we're calling our Jungle to the Hall rally is from 1 to 3 o'clock. 
Um, there's an event tent right there uh, on the on the uh, grounds of the Hall of Fame. Uh, from one to one thirty is more of just kind of our meet and greet uh, time. From one thirty to, uh, to from one, at one thirty we start our rally. We're going to talk about each one of these individual players. We got individual speakers. We have videos. We got some people that are dialing in for those things. Spend some time celebrating our Bengal greats, and then the Hall of Fame uh, basically is doing uh, at three o'clock and three thirty two separate basically the special theater events on the Cincinnati Bengals history. So they went out of their way. The curator up there is doing a special display. Uh, for uh, Anthony Munoz there uh, while we're there, just for us that day. And at 3 and 3.30, they're doing a special Bengals Focus Theater, the history of the Cincinnati Bengals. And then after that, that's a special theater um, event. Everybody just gets a self-guided tour through through the Hall of Fame. And, and we've, uh, you know, the, the high school, Mass on High School up there, um, uh, Coach Nate uh, was a high school coach here in yeah, Cincinnati, Nate LaSalle, yep, LaSalle Nate High yep, School, yep, really yep. good guy. So we worked it out with Coach Nate where we're going to start out the morning uh, at 10 o'clock from 10 to 12. You can show up anytime you want between 10 and 12 at Maslin Senior High School. And uh, you're going to have the opportunity to walk on the field, get pictures on the field, uh, get a picture with Paul Brown's statue out front, walk into the locker rooms, see all the state championship teams uh, of Paul Brown. We're going to get to walk through their indoor facilities. They've got a miniature uh, trophy room. You're going to see pictures and murals and things of Paul Brown. That's where it all started for Paul Brown. So there's people that are going up Friday. There's people that are going up uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday morning. So that's where the event is. I again, uh, the um, the tours of Maslin High School from 10 to 12, and then from 1 to 3 is our uh, is our event. And you know, after the event's over, everybody's going to get a tour of the Hall of Fame. It's going to be a wonderful, fun time. What's it been like leading this charge and and getting this rally together? and seeing the response just from Bengals, like other Bengals fans, because it'd be one thing if it was a small group of Bengals fans being like, hey, we're trying to spearhead this. But it seems like it's grown to a huge proportion and you're getting, like you said before, other people from the NFL coming yeah. to, to your cause and being like, yeah, you know what, these guys are right and they're recognizing. Yeah, we, we have uh, the RSVP that we're doing. And again, we're just trying to get a more accurate head count of how many people we're gonna have in this <laughs> tent. We don't want too many, we don't want, you know, right. we, need a, we need a good number. Um, it, we've got over 200, I think the last count was 210, 215 people that are as VP as of this morning. Uh, we expect this last week to have to grow to 250 to 300. We know there's going to be some no-shows in that number, but we feel pretty confident there's going to be 150 to 250 fans up there celebrating uh, these legends that their legacy should be protected in a Hall of Fame. But, uh, you know, I, I know we expected a pretty good response and the timing of the event, uh, June 19th on Father's Day weekend. and. Maybe not the best time, but the reason, the why behind that, we couldn't do it 4th of July. There's golf outings for some of these players. Um, the votes are early July. The, the ballots go out to the senior voters uh, early July. Now's so the time to play the senior. Now, now's the time. Right. Now's the time. And they see and hear everything that the Bengal fans are doing. And, and I would just tell the Bengal fans, if, they're, if you're on social media, we want to make sure we're being respectful. This is not something we want to damage anything that, you know, Jeff Hobson and the Bengals have been working really hard on this thing as well. And we just want to do what we can as fans to supplement it. Uh, and bring local and national attention to this. And, and I think the fans have done a great job with that. I want you to think into the future. You're standing at Fawcett Stadium or whatever it's called now, and they're inducting... Tom Benson Field, I believe. Tom Benson <laughs> Field, okay. It was Fawcett. Yes, it was. You're right. So Tom Benson Field, Ken Anderson, Ken Riley, the next Bengals oh. are going in. After all the work that, that's gone into this, what, what are you going to feel at that moment? Whether it was work put in this or not, it, it doesn't matter. I, I would tell you the, the ring of honor had me tear up. Uh, you know, that's kind of crazy because I'm a huge history guy. Um, but if what would be so cool to see Ken Riley and Ken Anderson going into the same time, we will be there in force uh, from, with Bengals Nation. And uh, I guarantee you there will not be a dry eye um, at that uh, ceremony uh, when that happens. And we hope they both get in at the same time. That would be great. But uh, it's, it's, it's going to be very emotional for everybody. All right, tell the people, where can they go if they want to go up to Canton or, and help support this? Yeah, so this is a free event, guys. Uh, you know, it's, um, you can just show up. Uh, you know, if you want a tour of the actual Hall of Fame, you're going to have to pay to get into that. We do have $5 discounted tickets where the, the tour only costs you uh, $23. But, hey, uh, if you're able to go to our social media platforms and RSVP to kind of give us a more accurate head count, on Twitter it's Bengal Gems with an S underscore BTR. That's before the roar. Uh, and on, on Facebook, it's uh, Bengal Gems Before the War Tailgate Experience. Uh, all the information that we just talked about is on that site, uh, and the ability to RSVP is on there as well. But I know we're going to have people making decisions late in the week to go up. You're more than welcome. We, we, the more the merrier. We're really going to have a fun time with this up there.